Hello everyone. Hope you are enjoying your day. Sorry about uh, the delay. I was having some technical difficulties in uploading this video. But uh, today we'll focus on understanding why it is hard to find any kind of friendships and bonds, especially in USA. <clears throat> so a lot of immigrants actually come to uh, USA and Canada uh, over the last few years. Uh, they keep on coming here. And what we find out is that uh, most of the immigrants with either live in like uh, ghettos or they will just get involved in their day-to-day -day activities. And uh, whenever they have free time, uh, since they are far away from their original families or their relationships, uh, they find it very hard to make new bonds and friendship, uh, especially here in the US. Uh, so let's dive down uh, to understand uh, why friendships are so hard in the US and what are some of the things that people can do to change this actually. So uh, many times a uh, lot of people who immigrate to the US uh, come as students, uh, meaning they wouldn't have a lot of uh, funds. So their primary goal is to get a job. And uh, as a result, you know, they work very hard during their, let's say, masters if they are doing it here in the US and they continuously apply day in and day out to secure a job. Then, um, so if you compare it from back home in India, where you have a lot of help in terms of your family members and parents, uh, you may also have a house help and house servants as well, who would be doing a lot of work such as cooking, cleaning, uh, washing your clothes and things along those lines. So many times you don't even have to worry about those basic things. Well, in the US, the uh, situation becomes that you have to basically uh, manage your home, organize everything. Uh, it's super expensive to basically own any kind of, uh, you know, uh, machines or equipment. So you end up doing everything by your own hand. Uh, and hence, between, you know, studies, job, and uh, household chores, you hardly get any time to socialize. Another thing I have also seen what basically plays out is that uh, even if let's say you are married and you have a small family, uh, still it is very hard to basically form bonds or friendships here if you already don't know them. Because one, you are an immigrant from a country uh, other than the US and uh, generally uh, the society here in the US is very uh, individualistic which means that people are only concerned about their hobbies uh, and they generally don't kind of, uh, you know, mingle up with other people rather quickly. They just focus on their own hobbies. So they may go for hiking, they may go for swimming, they may go for wine tasting, dancing, etc. Uh, and hence, uh, many of the people as immigrants who come here uh, basically find solace in going to their own community. And that's why you would see a uh, lot of people, like for instance, Indians, they will be living in certain cities and in certain areas within the cities. So if I were to uh, call out, like uh, there are uh, areas in the US, all across US and Canada, which are heavily dominated by uh, Indians in particular. So uh, if I talk about Texas, then uh, Houston and Dallas have a very sizable population of Indians. Uh, then New Jersey, for sure has a very large population of Indians to some degree, even in New York, you will find, but mostly it would be in New Jersey. Then if you talk about the West Coast, then uh, San Silicon Valley, San Francisco, San Jose area have a very high domination of Indians. Uh, similarly, if you go to Seattle, uh, the east side of Seattle, which is Redmond and uh, Bellevue, uh, Sammamish has very high uh, domination of Indians. Uh, now, if you talk about Canada, then uh, Toronto and Vancouver are very well-known Indian hubs as well. So what happens is that once, uh, you know, people get uh, the names of these popular cities, even the new incoming folks also tend to go to these places because they feel comfort that at least they can get their food, they will have people speaking their language, uh, and uh, having somebody from India gives them a comfort that in a new land, at least they'll have something in common. Uh, and more so, you know, because there are so many Indians uh, in these locations, uh, if you basically go there 
walk out etc uh, you find familiar faces you feel much more open because you see people like yourself who can be part of your same culture or who may speak the same language and because of this concentration you start seeing a lot of uh, festivals you start seeing a lot of uh, restaurants you also start seeing a lot of grocery stores who start selling uh, indian products and indian produce so for instance nowadays uh, uh, every week every weekend there is a holi celebration happening throughout march i have myself been to couple of them already and as i said every week throughout march there will be one holy function uh, across the neighborhood right so that's the benefit if you are living in a like a indian dominated area you will have access to those things and as i said in any of these cities uh, it will be a similar scenario played uh, another thing is that uh, in in the us people tend to focus on trying to you know optimize uh, weekends so even though holy i know uh, is uh, uh was supposed to be on monday which is yesterday uh but here in the us people tend to make all uh festivals on a weekend and as i said once you do not have any sequence of the specific day and weekends is what you basically focus on then you can technically do it in whichever weekend is suitable for you and hence different you know communities will have uh different holies so for people like us we can attend multiple uh, holies in the month of march i did the similar thing last year in the month of month of uh, feb this year it is in the month of march so in that way you know you can think about whenever you have the chance of these festivals etc there you will find lot of people and that's one way to basically mingle with people and make new friends uh, and but the problem here would be these people would be primarily indians right so uh, you would still make friends but then you will be limited to your own community only again you are not mingling up with the uh, uh, remainder like americans who are there so similar thing happens over like uh, dashera diwali those kind of uh, larger festivals um, then you have specific spots here in the us like for instance you'll have lot of temples so iskon has a big uh, you know following here in the us and pretty much all uh, big cities whether, whether it be it bay area new york uh, seattle uh, vancouver toronto uh, even in uh, like dallas houston uh, all these places have iskon temples and a uh, lot of indians tend to like flock to these places and uh, they may find some bonds there by either doing volunteering there um or just like uh, visiting them for like a sunday feast they do a program known as sunday feast where they offer a, a very big platter of food uh, vegetarian food for devotees who anybody can come free of cost of course you can donate but then uh, the idea is you can sit together and eat uh, and i have myself gone there multiple times and have had that food and uh, it's it's a great way to like interact with people meet new people so that could be a venue uh then you know uh, in us there is this concept of meetups so lot of people would basically do meetups which is generally for people who are like transplant to a new city or they are new to a like a new city and a uh, lot of people who are younger or who are even like even even like there are specific groups which are like 20 something 30 something 40 something 50 plus 60 plus so there is lot of this concept of meetups so many people can sign up to these meetup groups and these meetup groups will basically set up like activities whether it is wine tasting hiking or they may conduct a like a, a you know board games or like badminton soccer like it can be based upon any kind of theme and there is a specific website like meetups.com you can check it out i think uh, facebook also now has concept of events and then there is uh, event bright as well these are all websites that are along the lines of uh, meetups or events or some kind of uh, uh, you know ability for people to come together and meet so you can discover such kind of you know groups or societies and you can be part of those meetups and whenever they set up a meetup you can go physically kind of meet people so these become very good avenues for people from completely different backgrounds who have similar interests can come and meet together and hence you may form some kind of relationships so in uh, particularly in my case itself like uh, when i was single uh, almost like a decade ago or something 
uh, I used to join some several of these meetups, uh, single meetups, and many of those meetups used to set up like volleyball uh, or uh, just summer picnic or uh, just get together. Uh, alumni meetups were also there where you can go and like meet different people, etc. But this concept of meetups, potlucks where you cook something and bring to a like a like a park or something. So the good good point here in the U.S. is generally. Uh, you have very lavish parks that are very well maintained and technically you can just say hey we are going to meet from let's say 11 a.m to like 2 p.m in this park and they will generally have desks they will have dustbins etc so each of the members who are coming in they can bring let's say some like uh, a food or some drinks with them some let's say volleyball or games with them they can all meet in the park and uh, like basically play games, play some music, sit together, have a potluck, uh, do a picnic and go back home. So I have personally, when I was like single, used to participate in a lot of these kind of events. And sometimes you will come to these events often and then you'll start seeing some regular people coming to these things, right? And this way you can form kind of relationship with some of those people. So I've seen that that kind of works. Another thing is that I've also seen the concept of conferences. So if you are part of, let's say, a tech industry or you work in software field, etc., uh, especially in all the tech heavy cities, which are again like New York, New Jersey, uh, Austin, Dallas, Houston, uh, San Francisco, San Jose, Seattle, Vancouver, Toronto. So in in canada and us pretty much all the cities where which have very high proportion of indians uh, concentration also tend to be tech cities as well so a lot of tech companies would do these meetups and uh, sessions uh, where uh, they will present about either a technology such as ai ml data cloud or uh, product specific you know meetups and again generally these are free meetups all these companies will be sponsoring so you'll at the least you'll have a free pizza maybe they'll give you one like a pen maybe a mug maybe a t-shirt etc so sometimes a lot of techies will also join these meetups and again being in the us you that is also a forum where one, you can improve your networking because you get to meet different companies and people working on different technologies. You also get to learn about a new technology because they will be doing the presentation. And most of the time, these are either followed up with a, like a networking event where you'll have some drinks and some food or it will start with a networking event and then follow up. There will be uh, these seminars and presentations. So that's also another area where people can go and meet up and uh, try to build bonds. But uh, once you get married, right, maybe you have kids, you are married, uh, then if you want to like uh, build a like a relationship uh, with other people, like how do you do that? So in those areas, what I have seen in my case, since I have my son, uh, who is a toddler, that uh, we often take him to the park. Like so uh, we are fortunate that we are uh, in vicinity of uh, several uh, parks, which are very good place for kids to play and as the weather becomes better like we are already in spring season and as weather becomes much better uh, we will start taking our son to the park quite often and the beauty of kids is that like other parents also come with their kids and hence you start meeting a lot of people because now your talks are revolving around your kids so a lot of people families who have kids will find groups because uh, Either you'll send your kids to the school and then you'll meet the same parents who are also meeting there uh, or you will come to the parks where other parents would also be joining you and uh, bringing their kids together and you spend close to let's say one or two hours pretty much every day or every alternate day and if you start going to same places and similar people start coming together uh, this also converts into you know relationship because then you start talking to them uh, kids become friends so this is also another way of you know uh, meeting new people and forming new relationships so i think uh, in us right uh, you have to take a lot of personal effort things will not happen automatically like if i were to contrast this with uh, you know in india uh, there are a lot of uh, like uh, housing societies where people live and even if let's say you don't know your neighbors 
uh, Indian societies tend to do a lot of festivals and functions. So there will be at least a Diwali function, a Holi function. And then they may do a basic like 26th January, 15th August and things along those lines. And they may have some additional, you know, uh, you know, maybe small fates or uh, some celebratory functions, maybe Durga Puja or something like that. So uh, in, in, in India, a lot of societies would do these functions. And because we have so many festivals in India, every month or every other month, there will be something or the other. So I just talked about like the major ones, like uh, so do you have New Year functions, you have Christmas functions, uh, you have Diwali, you have maybe uh, Janmashtami function, you have Holi Tej function. There are just tons of them in India, right? I don't even remember all of them because we don't tend to have those many here in the US, but at least those major functions are there, festivals are there in India. So a lot of these uh, housing societies, the RWAs will plan these functions throughout the year. So even if let's say you don't have direct friends in your society where you live, if you were to just participate in these functions or just like visit them or go there, it will give you a chance to like mingle with people and you know interact with them and you'll form friends. Same way uh, in India, when you go to your work, generally a lot of people when they're working, they'll form friendships in their work as well, uh, which is very unlikely here in the US because as I said, here people are very individualistic in the US. So even when you go to the work, they'll just focus on the work. It will uh, rarely convert into a, actually a friendship. It will be very transactional. It will be focused on the work friendship, not necessarily you bring those people back to your home and like enjoy. I'm not saying that's completely impossible, but I'm saying it is rarer in the US as compared to in India where you tend to bring your work friends to your home and uh, just hang out with them and uh, chill. Here, that's very rare to see that happen. So again, uh, even in the like apartments that we live here in the US, it's very rare to know like who is your neighbor or having you know relationships with them and forming the bonds because here the uh, apartments don't conduct such kind of meet and greet or even if they do, uh, they are very like uh, uh, not not very uh, you know warm function. These are very forced. They may do a like a meet or greet day or something like that, which would be maybe half an hour maybe one hour session where a lot of people come and talk to each other, have some drinks and go. And not even all the you know, apartments will do that. Very few of them will do it here in the US. So those are those seem to be very artificial. It's almost feels like, like, uh, like in offices or uh, in corporate, you will do some corporate office parties, et cetera, where they'll give some seminars and you have some food and some drinks. You go there, talk to some people there, network and basically move out. Uh, those do not convert into actual kind of bonds or friendships, right? Similarly, the apartments here also do something similar and uh, many of them don't even do anything basically. So, so the chances of you basically finding some bonds or building some relationship uh, in sitting in your apartments and all is extremely rare here in the US, unlike in uh, India where you have a lot of vibrant communities and people just tend to talk to each other quite a bit. So uh, it is very important for people here who are like, let's say single, or even if they are married, uh, if they have to expand their network and really form bonds, then they will have to put themselves out there. Uh, it's very important here in the US. So you have to take initiative. You have to find such kind of meetups and events uh, which are matching your interest to basically putting yourself out there. So similarly, if you think, you know, here you have a very strong concept of dating, right? Which is not very common in India. Here, people have to put themselves out like, hey, I'm dating. And girls and boys both do it uh, quite like open. And it is expected that if you are putting yourself out there, uh, people can basically come to you and ask you out. Uh, it is expected, which is not the case in, in India, right? This is just a cultural difference here in the US and uh, in between India that people would put themselves out. Uh, generally, people who are extrovert, who speak, uh, you know, quite a bit uh, and who dress well are, are looked upon as leaders here in the US. Uh, that's how, like you can think about it is shallow, but you know, that's the way the life is here in the US. So can't, so I'm just sharing, you know, some facts around like how to 
build your life how to build your bonds friendships networks here in the us uh, and uh, so if you have a kid here in the us if you have a family then taking your kids to the parks uh, taking your kids to kids activities and you meet other parents there who may have similar kind of challenges etc will help you form some kind of bonds uh, and again if you happen to live in cities where you have high dominance of indians uh, wherever you'll go you'll find other indians and again you'll start talking to them in your language maybe in hindi or like whichever language you speak uh, again you can start forming some uh, bonds there uh, one more thing that kind of stands out is that because you are an alien so in in the us anybody who is a non us citizen who comes as an immigrant to the us is considered as an alien that's the word they use so anyone who is an alien who comes here because the numbers are so small right so if you think uh, indian population is still under 2% in the us so it's a very small uh, you know percentage of population but indians are the richest ethnicity in the us so i think the average income that indians make uh, is uh, over i think uh, 130 or 140k maybe 150k uh, average which as far as the us average is considered uh, is almost double of that right so us average is around 70 75k uh, indian specifically is around 150k which is the highest uh, ethnicity uh, which uh, with the average pay package that much i think so so indians are very well to do here in the us they are known to be focused on software and it primarily <clears throat> there are other things also like uh, gujaratis usually own a lot of uh, gas stations like basically petrol pumps and uh, motels uh, and uh, uh, other indians are more focused on the you know software and it side of things uh, but as i said since the number of indians in particular as an aggregate is just 2% of the us population hence these uh, areas or cities where you have a high domination of indians they tend to kind of flock together like kind of form ghettos uh but these ghettos are not in the bad bad terminology like you have ghettos where there is a rampant crime and a drug and abuse and things like that generally the indian ghettos like especially in the tech heaven cities that you see you would see a lot of emphasis on education and it's not only true for indians it's true for chinese as well so a lot of places where you have high domination of chinese and indians you would see the scores the grades of the schools will go higher because again asians tend to focus their chil- children around studies and high academic rigor which results in the you know upping up of the grades of all the schools that 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 are there in those areas so that's one benefit generally in those areas the the city is very well to do because uh, as i said indians are high earning as a result they will pay high taxes and as you get more taxes and as your schools are doing much better these places will get more funding from the federal as well as the state government so overall the upkeep of the city and the neighborhoods that they are is pretty good done well and generally these neighborhoods do not attract a lot of uh, drugs or any kind of substance abuse or any kind of uh, uh, violent crimes and things along those lines because uh, indian values are to keep the families together take care of their kids uh, nurture them well so generally you do not have those kind of uh, abuses such as you know single parent child uh, single parent you know families a uh, lot of divorces uh, uh, mental health issues uh, crime uh, and uh, uh, poor grades in the schools because generally those things are kind of and it could also be the case because you know most of the people who come to the us at least have a basic uh, like intellect level which is higher than on an average right so uh, the kind of indians that come to the us or canada are generally above average uh, they are uh, at least middle class um, who come here either they will be extremely intelligent that they get scholarships etc and hence they are here in the us or at least they are above uh, you know average above middle class like middle class or upper middle class to ca- to be able to afford you know uh, like an immigration and visa and fees etc so you are already getting 
cream of the cream right who emigrate to the us these are not like uh, downtrodden people etc that are coming to the us so automatically there is a filter right and us wouldn't allow you to come here anyway if you don't have the right funding and uh, if you are not super intelligent and things like that right there are different kind of visas that are there so technically you have very high uh, you know um, uh, quality of indians who are coming here on an average i'm not going to say that everyone is high and all but what i meant to say is uh, either you are extremely intelligent and even if uh, that's the case you may not necessarily have a lot of money to come here in the us or alternatively you have good amount of money and hence you are coming to the us but other than that bracket i don't think anybody else will be even allowed in the us so as a result when these people who are driven who are immigrant who come to the us uh, will become you know high flyers and they'll they'll struggle quite a bit they are hard working they are intelligent so generally it reflects in their communities as well where they live so i think in, in total i would say is uh, uh, if you are not an extrovert if you don't put yourself out there if you don't attend these meetups or go out there talk to people yourself it will be very hard to form any kind of bonds or relationships uh, in the us because here uh, being an extrovert go and talking to people starting small talks etc is preferred way of communication in the us and as i said the society here is very individualistic right so if you don't tend to meet people quite often they'll just forget you and as i said even you're living in a community you will not know who is your next next door neighbor and what they are doing etc because people are very individualistic and focused on themselves and uh, uh, most of the times when immigrants come they don't have extended families here right so whenever a festival time etc comes uh, you don't have anywhere to look out for or go wherever because you don't have family uh, at least for the people in the us they also don't have a like a strong family culture but there are times such as christmas there are times such as thanksgiving where they fly to at least go back to their parents or like siblings and things like that but for immigrants uh, like indian they don't have any of that here so they have to basically stay there and form the local bonds uh, around uh, one thing i would say that stands out is that i have seen uh, indians particularly and i think it may be true for other communities as well that uh, when you are outside people tend to help each other quite a bit because they know that we are like small in number and uh, so i have seen a lot of groups here on facebook and uh, things along those lines like indians in like us or uh, around certain let's say uh, hindus in in the us and those kind of small groups etc are formed where people can ask questions hey i'm experiencing this or i need that etc and people will be very prompt in responding to them and helping each other out so that is also something i have seen works very well and even that can help you basically build bonds where you just uh, you know support other people you can ask question on those forums people respond back and things like that so i think um, i'll end this episode here by stating the following that if you want to basically build bonds in the us you have to put yourself out there you have to think about what you can give not what you can take uh, join any kind of meetups and events and things around like uh, culture places wine tasting dancing singing cooking hiking playing sports there are multiple kind of things right karaoke uh, where you can my, find uh, like minded people uh, if you are like having kids then like doing kids activities and revolving around them could be a great opportunity for you to find like minded people uh, and then volunteering is a big thing here in the us as well so you can volunteer in soup kitchens you can volunteer in temples you can volunteer for cleaning stuff you can volunteer for planting stuff like there are tons of things so if you search and discover you will discover lot of things that you can do but again you will have to do the need it will you will not automatically find friends or it won't happen like uh, uh, serendipitously uh, at least in the us so you have to seek what you want and then you can get if you keep trying it so that's the mantra to be successful in the us in building relationships and bonds so i hope you like this discussion today do consider sharing subscribing and liking uh, the content 
uh, do write to us let us know what topics you would like for us to cover i hope you continue to enjoy your rest of the day and hope to meet you soon till then take care and have a nice day talk to you soon.